Hey, Peppin. Yo, yo. Oh, hold on a second. Meter, I gotta tell you something. Yeah. So I've been having this like recurring dream, and it's so strange. I'm trying to figure out what it means or what it's called exactly. Like, it's just like you're slipping on a banana peel, but it's in the dark. Like, you can't see anything. It's just pitch black. <laughs> That's fun. Do you wake yourself up laughing? That's pretty funny. Well, I guess it is kind of funny. Would that be considered dark comedy? Uh, Nate, we need to talk. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going today, Pepin? Yo, yo, I am here and I am ready to have this excellent conversation about whatever we're talking about. I am too. And I'm really excited because we have with us here today, super special guest, Jer from the Film Sims. How's it going today? Hey, hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. It's really nice to have you on. I'm happy to be here. Man. We had a lot of fun with you guys on the show, so it's it's good to return the favor. I think we had a lot of really good discussion, and we all had had different opinions. So anyone who hasn't seen that should should check out that episode about yep. um, Army of the Dead, and we talked about a ton of other stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, today on our show, we'll talk about what what are we talking about, Nate? Something about bananas. Yep, so I, I think we should talk about dark comedy. So, Jer uh, has a background in comedy. And he's actually done some stand-up shows. So I think this would be a great opportunity to get, like, like a professional take on this topic. Uh, Meter and I, like, we sometimes are funny, but I wouldn't consider myself a comedian. Meter might consider differently, though. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's an interesting topic, especially like uh, kind of with current kind of social stuff, because the idea that's been kind of eating up my mind is, is dark comedy OK? Some people say that's not OK to joke about. And sometimes maybe it is. Sometimes it's not. And that, that, that's I think we should discuss here. OK, no, that so, makes sense to me. You say you say Jer is a is a professional in comedy. I'd love to. Uh, what are what are your qualifications in that? Because maybe uh, I are not. I did stand up for probably eight years. Oh wow! Um, yeah, you know, just doing comedy around. You know, I've I've traveled and uh, done comedy in a lot of different places. I stopped before the pandemic, uh, like a year before the pandemic. But ever since uh, things have kind of restricted, uh, other restrictions have kind of lifted. I've started going out again. I'm trying to. Uh, build my backup, my act uh, back up from zero, which has been kind of exciting and fun lately. Uh, so yeah, I've got some experience, and uh, you know, I've, I've been in the circles, you know, comedians talking to each other about this kind of topic for a long time. How would you describe your comedy? Is it kind of like a kind of like Jerry Seinfeld kind of comedy, or is it a, a bit of an edge to it? Uh, I'm more of a silly story guy like so stories with silly observations peppered in i mm -hmm. guess would be the best way to put it yeah mm -hmm. i got you i got you and would you say that you have any sort of dark humor in there or is it all just kind of like observational mostly observation there there's some dark things for sure mm -hmm. it's like i you know i can i can talk about race and stuff and sometimes that can be uh depending on the audience uh hit or miss you know but mm -hmm. yeah that's um so yeah so there's all kinds of uh, boundaries for what people would consider dark, for sure. Right. I, I think that's maybe the best place to start. Uh, Meter, how would you define dark comedy? Um, uh, that's a good question. Maybe I'll, I'll open with something about it has to be a topic that it has some sort of tragedy or uh weight to it something that's not just completely fluffy uh hmm. maybe we can build from there hmm. yeah I, I know like i feel like for me dark comedy is something that you know when you see it kind of like pornography hmm. uh I, I can make some identification like it's it's a darker subject material but you know sometimes you can have like things that are really dark but aren't dark comedy like take tom and jerry like that cat gets skinned alive like millions of times and no one thinks that's like dark. But if you 
to sort of describe it, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a little that's a little crazy. That's a little extreme. Yeah, I think it's anything that has some kind of uh, taboo attached to it, or like some. I think tragedy is a thing that you know, uh, just something that uh, makes people recoil in a way. You know, um, yeah, that would be my definition. And there also definitely is a sort of like social acceptability factor to it as well. Yeah, because what I find to be dark comedy is probably not going to be considered dark comedy by 90% of the population. Right. It's kind of like porn, you know, like uh, most porn I see is considered like extreme by most standards, but by internet standards, it's standard by general popular standards. It's like, like <laughs> what the fuck are you watching? Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We're learning a lot about you today. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Reddit would think it would, it's nothing. So my, my standard for average, like say person nowadays is Reddit, but Reddit is very extreme compared to like the modern populace. So I don't know. But uh, so dark comedy, like, like, can we think of like any sort of dark comedy bit that may have stretched a little bit to us? Because the thing I'm interested in finding out is where is that line? What makes it upset, unacceptable? You want something that's unacceptable or something that we just find dark? Let's say it's, let's say that something let's say it's something we find dark like a little dark comedy bit there. All right. Um, uh, some one thing I can think of, and this is a like a sh show that I'm not going to spoil what the show is, but essentially this guy, th this kid, he his mother gets killed right by uh, this this monster essentially, mm -hmm. and then l later on in the series uh, we find out that the monster was actually just her, like their dad's. Uh, former wife and the former wife before you know they got turned was like i'll find you and return to you and then she ends up you know going out and killing you know the main characters you know uh finds the family but then ends up like eating them yeah. so that is a little bit of dark humor there because it, it's a little bit twisted it's kind of funny on the offset but it's also just like oh this kind of messed up yeah yeah I mean, what I'm, where's what's the funny part there uh, it's a little bit ironic because it's like she went out to find she wanted to find the family. I'll, I'll, I'll find you. I'll return to you. She finds the family, but then she's a monster. So she ends up eating them. So it's not the way that was expected. Uh, OK, you, you don't find that funny. I mean, not really. OK, you yeah, he had to be there. But yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe you're just really bad at telling this story. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's a good chance of it. I'm trying not to spoil anything or too much yeah. with it. So th that's another aspect to it. Uh, but that's that's an instance of dark comedy I can think of. Yeah. Uh, there's also a show where there's all the like ironies, essentially. So it's ironic that, say, the person who's all about pride is getting, uh, uh, you, you know, they're seeking out like uh, anti prideful things, like very selfless thing. So there's a bit of darkness there and the way it plays out because you can have it like almost like a horror sort of thing where it's a self revelation. But it's kind of funny because, you know, the thing that's they're supposed to be about is what's kind of uh, eating them in the end. So that's maybe retributional dark comedy. But uh, can you want to think of any other ideas since my ideas maybe aren't <laughs> as exploited? Uh, yeah, the one that came to mind for me was uh, when Tig Notaro had uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. She did a half hour set about just that topic that uh, you can find on you know streaming services and Apple Music and Spotify and whatnot. Uh, it's a great set. It's very uncomfortable to listen to, but it's also very funny. Like she finds uh, real humor in the like ironies and discomfort of the situation uh, while also not really shying away from how uh, scary that kind mm -hmm. of thing is you know have in your life so mm -hmm. that would be my like one of my top um examples mm. would, would you say that's comedy uh would you say that's dark because of the subject material being dark like it's a sadder material and harder to make fun of or make light of yes i would say yeah it's definitely hard to make fun of, like light of it's uh at the time for for it was like a very fresh bit of news so mm -hmm. it's hard to uh yeah it, it it was it's a very um uh, unvarnished look at the, mm -hmm. the the mind of a comedian in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one instance I just came up with, maybe a better instance than my other examples, is uh, Louis C.K. has some dark comedy bits. Mm -hmm. So there's one in particular where he talks about how if you had a time machine and you're white, 
you're pretty much okay to go like any time period. But if you're black and you have a time machine, you're pretty much screwed. Like yeah. any time period, maybe some worse than the others. But you know, that's a little bit of dark comedy, and because yeah. it, 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 it's got like this bite to it. It's not kind of like I wouldn't say it's edgy, but it's it's got like a dark sort of reality to it. Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's got a few of those. Meter, would you come up with any examples, or are you just agreeing with the examples we give? No, those have all all been good examples. Um... There's uh, a comedian, there's a voice actress that I follow on social media that um, has started really breaking out in some of her TikTok stuff uh, and her podcast. Um, and it's all about her being widowed. Uh, so she's found a massive following in doing these comedy TikTok videos um, about being widowed and kind of some of the experiences that she's had to endure or... Um, I think that'd probably be the easiest way to, to phrase it because of that. I think a lot of the comedy comes from both the tragedy of it and the fact that it's very relatable for a very small subset of people. And it's kind of nobody else can make those types of jokes except that exact group of people because they're the only people who understand the experience. Um, and it may only be like it may be a little bit funny to people outside that circle but to people inside that circle it resonates at such a high frequency that they may find that like not only funny but comforting in a way and kind of normalizes something terrible um so i think in that instance it's dark comedy doing a very good job of kind of connecting people and and making something terrible into something a little more manageable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those like real aspects that are being asked and explored? Is that kind of the darkness to it? Like, is that also what makes it relatable in a sort of way? I don't know that I understand the question. So like, I don't know the, the material exactly, but it sounds like she's pointing out like say realities of her situation and kind of make, making light of them or kind of make, you know, I'm not gonna say making a joke, but you know, it's, it's finding the humor in it. And is that re relatability aspect, like the relatable, re realistic aspect, is that what people are finding humorous in it? The fact yeah. they can relate to it? Yeah. Um, so uh, let me, I'll just come up with an example that's probably not like a, a real one while trying also not to be tasteless. Uh -huh. So there's like, uh, you know, the, the standard meme format um, on TikTok or any of those types of things where it's like my face when or something like that. So it would be like her doing a face and being like my face when I found my husband's dead body. And it's like that would is a relatable thing for that subset of people Just, that yeah. those are the only and it is. It's super shocking, which I think in and of itself adds a level of comedy where you're like, wow, you're able to like be that open about it or like my reaction, like her saying the things that probably all of these people have been feeling when she's like she was doing like a greeting line doing a you know mock greeting line at her husband's her late husband's funeral and some of the things that were said to her and then she was like reacting to them as she would have liked to be able to if there weren't social constructs preventing her from being able to mm -hmm. to be forthright about how she's feeling um, and how like not comforting the things that people were trying to say that to comfort her were and things like that. So things that are highly relatable to very specific people, but also from the outside, you know, having not experienced it, you can kind of be like, okay, yeah, I kind of see well, like how that, how she would feel that way. But yeah. obviously I'm not that target audience for that. Yeah, I definitely think it works with either if it works successfully, it's either because of recognition or relatability. Like you see, you've experienced that dark thing and you're laughing because it's not what's happened to you right now or whatever. Uh, or just like a gallows humor, just like, you know, laughing because it's all you can do. Um, otherwise, or, you know, otherwise you might cry. Like I know like a lot of doctors are, uh, you know, do like joke a lot about like darker stuff on the job because they're seeing death every day and it's just a way of coping. Mm -hmm. I remember learning about Gauss humor from some, I think it was a couple of letters from World War II sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there's an instance of a guy, probably not advisable, but he was in the trench, no, sorry, World War One. he was in the trenches and uh, there was this kind of dead bodies strewn about and, you know, 
to try to pile him up and uh, I guess one guy's hand was kind of sticking out. And so he went over and kind of shook the hand, you know, very kind of messed up and dark, but it also kind of has a humor to it because I, I don't know what's funny about it, but whenever he does kind of like a little bit comical. Mm -hmm. And if I was in a situation, I might do it myself because it, it's, you know, definitely fucked up. I probably wouldn't tell anybody I did it, but it's, it's like, hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> And just a weird way of coping with that kind of stressor. So I think humor is a super natural and normal way for people to to deal with stress or things that are beyond stress, that are beyond normal coping. I should clarify, it meant supernatural as in super natural, not supernatural. I was like, I was oh, confused fair. because I was like, humor, I mean, it's magic in its own way. Humor but. is <laughs> superpower. <laughs> Yeah, Gowell's humor is definitely an instance of dark comedy. I, I utilize Gowell's humor or maybe dark comedy a lot myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the way is, so I, I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And I'm not that big of a deal. But, you know, sometimes I make little jokes like, uh, like uh, yeah, if I take too much insulin, I'm going to die. That'd be <laughs> bad. Right? Like, I just kind of present it like a really terrible case, but in a like, super kind of like a light, cheery way. Uh, and done that before too. Like I've made jokes, and I, I kind of stop making these jokes because people get really uncomfortable with them. Mm -hmm. But I've said stuff like, "Okay, so I'll be there over at uh, seven o'clock, uh, unless I get into a car crash and die, in which case I won't." <laughs> like people get very unsettled by that, and, and I think maybe because they think there's an implication that I'm going to try to get into a car crash. Right. Uh, yeah. so, so I can understand that, but you know, the joke is that anyone can get into a car crash, and you know, you never know if you're going to die. So there's a kind of like dark, grim reality right there that you never know. Dri Driving is not particularly that safe; it's more safe than it should be. But like, if I was to make that joke, say one of you, what would your reaction to be? Because me, it's funny, but other people, so some people find it a little funny, but a lot of people are made uncomfortable. I would definitely find it funny. I'd be like, yeah. The, see you later you know yeah mm -hmm. i hope so yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever uh, whatever i would i don't know what i would reply to unless uh, we were doing it live <laughs> <laughs> right right uh, how about yourself peter do you find that like funny or do you would you kind of be more concerned i mean uh, i find it entertaining not funny uh i've i've tried to learn to categorize things a little bit differently when it comes to comedy between uh -huh. something that's entertaining and something that's funny. Um, when I'm watching a TV show, uh, for example, if I'm watching it and I enjoy watching it, uh, that's entertaining. If I'm laughing out loud, like multiple one, at least one time per episode for a series or several times throughout, like a, say like a comedy show, that's funny. And I think that there's a big difference in my mind between those two things. I wouldn't laugh out loud at that type of thing. I would probably mm -hmm. join in uh, and be like, all right, good luck. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't and I would find that entertaining. And that mm -hmm. would be me joining in on the entertainment. But I wouldn't find it funny. Mm -hmm. well, that's fair. As far as it crossing the line for other people, uh, what line do you think is being crossed there when they get offended? Like, I've been told you shouldn't joke about that. Forcing I think them people, to face harsh realities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think people get sensitive about, you know, certain topics, especially if they're close to it. Like, death is one of them for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, uh, death, sexual assault, those, those kind of things can, like, be very close to somebody's experience mm -hmm. uh, in a way that, you know, they, they don't want to acknowledge or uh, face in just a random conversation. So I can see where you would get uh, offended by that. Or, you know, put off at least. So with that one, there's sort of like a line that's being crossed with a lot of people. And I think maybe to some degree, it's the line that it's it's reminding people of their own mortality and own death. Because right? that's something that could happen to them. But maybe if there's a level of specificity to it, like, uh, I guess if I joke about my diabetes, like, I don't know, taking too much insulin and dying through the night. Like, that's a little too specific for, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, Maybe there's not that level of readability there that mm -hmm. that uh, for, for it to be like humorous to them, or maybe it's far too relatable because I think there's are kind of like that distinction, but maybe it's the person's individual relationship to that ship to that topic because I can take like almost any topic and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. I think the only couple topics I've been a little bit like I've gotten offended from is there's one there's one video I saw where 
uh, some kids were pretending to do seizures and they started like just following in random places and just like having seizures, just like some sort of dance music or something. I thought that was pretty tasteless. I wouldn't say that's dark humor, though. That seems more like just edgy humor. And maybe that's the distinction we can make there because okay. like, the, like there's edginess, which is, I think, can be dark. But then there's kind of dark humor, which I think is maybe a little bit different. Uh, but I, I think there's like a sliding scale. W- was that something you would agree on or disagree? I think shock humor would be a category under dark humor, kind of. Mm-hmm. Because it's still using a, a darkness to kind of get a response. But it's also um, the response is less nuanced, I guess would be the best way to put it. It's like uh, it's just hit, sh- like kind of shoving the darkness in your face and having you like recoil a little bit and then, you know, laugh in maybe relief, I guess might be the, the best way to put it. So I'd say they're related, but yeah, they're not the same thing, but there's a relation there for sure. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes shock humor or say uh, edgy humor a lot of times it's not actually funny but i guess there is maybe it's the same underlying mechanisms of like tension release tension release so maybe that's why it plays with the same sort of stuff or maybe dark humor is a bit more cognitive than than shock humor and shock humor is way more visceral or more more like uh animalistic in a sort of way mm, yeah maybe that's the distinction there so where would you cross the line as far as, say, dark humor becoming acceptable? Hmm. So in, an instance I can think of is if there's an immediate natural disaster hmm. and you're kind of making jokes about that, that's a little strange. Or if you're making specific jokes about someone being missing, well, let's say there's some you know, giant hurricane and somebody is living in that area that you know and you start making jokes about people dying in that sort of uh, environment, like, I think that's that's pushing it a bit because that's affecting people directly. Yeah. Maybe if you're on the other side of the world or something, maybe it's less bad because you're not going to be affecting those people. Like, maybe they'll still see those posts, but it's not sort of a direct sort of thing. Whereas if the person's directly affected by it, maybe that's kind of just a drawing line. Yeah. I, I think it depends on the case. I think there's um, a certain amount of nuance that you have to have to, to, to do something dark successfully you know like uh i agree with you that sometimes things are just too fresh like a natural disaster or a tragedy um that happens a couple days ago would be too much uh it's still fresh the emotions are still still fresh in people's uh minds but uh you know if i were to joke about something from uh say 40 50 years ago like i think it would be a little bit more acceptable because uh, it's less likely to still be an ongoing uh issue right um uh, one example i think there is obviously like say uh, uh world war ii and uh the nazis because uh there are so many jokes about that like uh i think the cliche one is like i did not see that coming mm-hmm. and stuff like that and there's been some holocaust jokes which i think are kind of a little tasteless mm-hmm. but you know some of them on the face of it are, are kind of funny in a sort of, sort of like messed up way yeah so you can get in kind of that kind of territory and maybe maybe there's definitely a social acceptability sort of thing because are those things okay to joke about right. and that's the aspect of taboo it i guess the question there would be what what defines this taboo like is taboo something that's generally like a social ability thing or is it individual to each kind of group i would you know say your audience right yeah i would say so yeah mm-hmm and that's is that something you're finding in uh, your comedy routines, share? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, depending on the age of it, like I had a a bit that ended with some some stuff about the Vietnam War because of the long story short, the gist of the story was that somebody thought that I was Vietnamese, but I'm not. Um, but uh, so like some audiences would find that oh, like I think depending on the age, um, and you know might find it a less funny than others. Like I, I performed in Japan and that bit like just slaughtered. Amazing. Um, but then other times it's been hit or miss depending on uh, some of the demographics at play. So I can definitely see where that kind of thing would uh, you know, be a factor, knowing your audience and stuff. Mm-hmm. When it started going poorly, what was the main indicator? Was it kind of like faces of disgust or is it just general uninterest? Probably a little bit varied, but... Uh, usually, I think silence is the the bigger the you know 
the more telling thing for a stand up at least cuz um laugh, I mean laughs obviously speak for themselves uh but other noises can also you know they at least elicit a reaction uh that shows that they're still paying attention but then silence is ambiguous so you can't really tell uh, what they're thinking and it's uh, hard to dig out of that sometimes hmm. right uh meter what what do you have any like little uh things to bring up here with dark humor like any questions or um i don't i think i think like having something that can take uh what would what might be be funny and make it kind of uncomfortable for somebody or the you know the recipient of the joke can be like a, a layer of realness to it that they're not looking to accept. Yeah. Um, I know there's there's certain people that I know that uh, they're they're in a younger younger age group than me, and they make like jokes about uh, wanting to kill themselves and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's a little more normalized in. Uh, a, and maybe I'm generalizing, but in a in a younger demographic, I've seen that be a little more normalized. But when I hear that, especially if it's somebody that like I I care about, that makes me super uncomfortable because there's just a level to that where it feels it it often feels like they're joking about it, but in a way where they're kind of like also expressing interest. It's really super uncomfortable. Uh, it makes me really, uh, I, I mean, uncomfortable is really the best word not to continue to reiterate it, but. Yeah, I see. It's definitely a balancing act, you know? Like, I think in cases of someone joking about, like, say, suicide, there's a, it's, it can be funny if you don't think that it's, like, testing the waters, you know? Mm. Like, they're not, like, saying it just to see how, you, how you're reacting and you think that there's a, a chance that they'll do it. Uh, that's scary. That's not funny. Um, but I definitely know that there's some like really dark jokes about suicide that that can be funny. I think there's a certain balancing act in terms of like distance and closeness where it's real enough that uh, you can really that the person making the joke um, kind of knows the ins and outs of what they're saying exactly mm -hmm. uh, versus just kind of throwing it out there, but also kind of a distance where it's not like, just like uh, expressing a certain kind of misery that could manifest itself in um, like physical action. I think there's also like a train of thought that might go along with that too. Like what yeah. made that joke come about? Was it mm -hmm. something that's maybe a little too real and would warrant a reaction like that? Like you're talking about something super negative in that person's life and then they make a joke like that versus, uh, and I'm sure this is, you could probably speak better than this, to, than anybody, Jared, being telling a story and having jokes along the way, and that story is the vehicle for those jokes, and vice versa, um, where they they complement each other and they they are each other's points versus mm -hmm. one being birthed directly from the other and having a point specifically because of it. Yeah, definitely. I can think of uh, two funny suicide jokes I've heard. Uh, one is not like a direct joke, but it's this uh, this Bill Burr uh, story. So essentially, you learn something on the news mm -hmm. about this guy who tried to kill himself, and he wanted to go like the, the most badass sort of way. So he got into a helicopter. It's like this first guy's first day for this guy in the job who was riding the helicopter, and guys kind of jumps out. You know, listen to this whole story, but it's it's pretty pretty messed up, but the way it's told and. Like he expresses like you know uh, feelings for the guy like you know feel bad for the guy, but the way he decided to do this was just like so badass, so amazing, uh, and it ends up he hit the water and it's just like in utter pain, like just essentially belly flopped into it, didn't die, mm -hmm. and there's a sort of like real sort of darkness to that where he tried really hard and had everything planned out, it did not work. Uh, he eventually died later at the hospital, but he, he was trying to avoid all the pain, and ironically he ended up in far more pain than he was intentionally trying to go for. Mm. So it's sort of like a dark irony there, which uh, I found the joke really, really funny, but it's also kind of, you know, really kind of extreme in that sort of way. Yeah. 
and there's another one I've heard before. I'm trying to recall. I'll probably bring it up at a later point. But it, it's not so much joking about the topic like seriously, or it, it's kind of like skirting around the topic. It's kind of uses it as, as like the focal point, but it's not. It's not the suicide that's funny. It's kind of like the stuff involved in the suicide mm. that's kind of humorous. And I, I suppose that's sort of like, uh, I, I, I suppose some topics you can kind of skirt around. Uh, in, in kind of leading to your point there, Meter, I think definitely the probability of something happening does affect the joke because I would be uncomfortable with someone making a joke, say, uh, you know, I'm going to kill myself. You know, I think it could be done in a way where it's like, say, not alarming, but like at least in school, like we were warned that that was a sign that someone is thinking about committing suicide, right. and kind of like you said, it's always like this little like a uh, little bit of grain of truth. It feels like in there, like they actually are contemplating it and they're trying to get your reaction to that, mm-hmm. and that makes me uncomfortable. Like I had a girlfriend that would mm-hmm. kind of say that stuff all the time, and though she was trying to elicit a reaction to me, and you know, told her like, you can't be making these jokes because I'm not going to treat them as jokes. Like it's fine if you think you're, you know, you know, being funny about this, but I don't find it funny, and I don't want to hear it. And if you start talking about it, I'm going to treat it as if it's serious. So, just got to give you that like clear heads up right there. And so, I, I think we've kind of uh, discussed dark humor in a lot of different ways. I think we can probably get a little bit deeper because I, I, I guess part of the thing is goes to like what is humor per se. Okay. And that that's like a whole can of worms. But, uh, you know, this episode's running a little long and I'm getting tired of editing. So, hey, next time when we get to talk, uh, we won't have better audio quality because I lost my files and blah, blah, blah. That's why I'm using a backup of the audio. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, hey, you guys have a great day. Definitely check out Jer. Look in the description for his links. And you guys, guess what? We need to talk. We need to talk.